And now with more on the IDF's closures of Palestinian NGOs in the West Bank, Vice President of NGO Monitor, Olga Deutsch. Olga, thank you so much for joining me. Now, what can you tell us about these organizations? How can you be certain of their connections to terror, for example? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's an important uh, additional development in this rolling and ongoing uh, episode. Uh, what we are actually talking about is not just a few terror-affiliated NGOs. We're talking about an NGO arm or NGO network of a Palestinian terror organization Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, PFLP. It is a designated terror group by Israel, clearly, but also by the U.S., the EU, and Canada. Um, what they have done is uh, a very smart move. They have they, they operate as a political party. They clearly have an armed uh, arm, right, a terror group. But they also created an NGO network. They have 13 NGOs affiliated to their group that uh, raise money from EU and other European governments, predominantly because the European countries have uh, a tradition of supporting civil society. But the funds, the money is only a second secondary issue here. A much bigger problem is actually the legitimacy that is being granted to these groups uh, through the funding and the support because they are being uh, uh, labeled as human rights and humanitarian uh, groups mm -hmm. as opposed to what they really are in practice, and that is uh, promoters of uh, terror group agenda at best and terror proxies at worst, as we have seen in the case of uh, late Rina Schnurb, uh, whose uh, anniversary of murder is coming up in a few days. I, I would like to remind your viewers that three years ago, Rina Schnurb was brutally murdered in a terror attack that took place uh, next to Jerusalem and uh, a terror cell uh, counting 50 people that affiliated to PFLP uh, had at least five people who served as senior officials of some of these NGOs. So how much of the information collected by Israel and NGO Monitor has actually been transferred to the UN, the EU and the United States? And why don't they believe the evidence? The debate that we are seeing between the Israeli government and the European and US uh, officials is a political it, uh, one. It is a politicization, if you'd like, of a security issue. NGO Monitor, an independent research organization that I represent, has been collecting for over a decade now open source, so publicly available information. And in colloquial language, that just means anyone can Google it, um, that uh, that that shows that uh, more than 60 officials uh, that work or serve on the boards of these 13 NGOs have direct links to the terror group PFLP, meaning that any one government, if it, if it liked to do so, could have checked and verified the information. Now, it is important to say another thing. The, the development, uh, the recent development that we are discussing today is not a new one. The Ministry of Defense merely ratified a decision that, would, that was made more than a year ago. Well, then regardless of the proof, the EU, the UN, the US, they're saying that they'll continue to operate with the closed NGOs in question until they're convinced to do otherwise. So what did closing the offices actually accomplish Short, in the short term? Well, those are two separate issues. The designation by the Israeli government is a security move and it uh, provides the Israeli government uh, legal tools to take action against these groups, including raiding their offices, closing their, shutting down their bank accounts, etc. The decision to fund or not fund these groups through various development and cooperation uh, programs by the EU and other European governments is a political decision that the European governments uh, should make on their own. It is important to mention that in, since the designation uh, and since the, the murder of Rina Schnurb and the uh, announcement that uh, of the involvement of the NGOs in the terror attack, the European governments themselves have taken serious uh, steps. Four governments have launched official investigations and three have uh, stopped their funding. The Dutch government actually canceled their contract with one of these groups after an independent investigation found uh, enough publicly available evidence that this group was clearly connected to PFLP and the EU uh, froze its funding pending final resolution of uh, 
of the issue. The German Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, a, uh, earlier this year um, in a press joint press conference with back then our foreign minister uh, Yair Lapid announced that Germany will continue to fund uh, organizations in the PEA without engaging with these six groups. Um, so there's there's the, the European discussion is actually um, a discussion and a disagreement between the elected officials in different European parliaments and the administration. The parliaments of the European governments are clearly saying when there is a open source, publicly available information of merely an affiliation between these NGOs and a terror group, that should be enough of a reason for us not to engage with them. I mean, one a common sense would uh, would uh, assume that uh, even a linkage to a terror group should should uh, disqualify a group uh, uh, from being a partner in a human rights or a humanitarian program. But the administration of these governments insists on continuing to work in working with them because they have been doing so for over a decade. And I assume uh, it would be an embarrassment for these uh, ministries to uh, to admit that they should have known better. Hey, Olga, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for having me.